Happy New Year! Welcome to another episode of Grub and Gab with me, Pixie, where I show you how to make something delicious to eat, and then I eat the delicious thing to make you jealous while talking about various topics. Today, it's my 10th episode! Yay! I'm very excited about that, and I'm going to be showing you how to make this delicious olive and spinach pasta. It's vegan, and don't worry, there are substitutes to make it gluten-free as well. And since it is the new year, I'm going to be talking about New Year's resolutions. So before I start eating and talking, let me show you how to make this bowl of yum. First, we're going to start by prepping our ingredients. Get a medium-sized shallot, and you're going to want to slice it very thin. Once the shallot is sliced, set it aside on a plate. Next, we're going to finely mince three cloves of garlic and also set it aside. Next, we're going to prep our olives. I like to use Kalamata olives because they have a stronger, brinier flavor and I like to get them pre-pitted because it makes it a lot easier. But if you don't like Kalamata olives, you can use either ripe black olives or green olives if you prefer. Just make sure that they're pitted. We're going to need about a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup of olives. And then we're going to slice them into quarters so that they're easier distributed throughout the pasta. And then set them aside in a bowl. Next, you're going to take the zest off of one medium-sized lemon. And set it aside in a bowl. Then we're going to juice that one lemon and put that in the same bowl with the zest as well. And now on to the cooking. Bring a large pot of water to a rolling boil, and then you want to add salt to the water. Next, let's talk about the pasta. I like to use whole grain or whole wheat pasta for this recipe since I don't have any meat or protein in it, but you can use any pasta you want. There's even a lot of gluten-free options out there, so feel free to substitute with whatever pasta or noodles you want. You can even do spiralized vegetable if you're going for a low-carb meal. So we're only going to use half a pound of the pasta and put that into the boiling water and move it around when you first put it in so everything gets submerged so it cooks evenly. And then you're going to set the timer to about two minutes shy of what al dente is per the instructions on the box of your pasta. So as the pasta is boiling, we're going to make our sauce. Start off by heating up two tablespoons of vegetable oil in a large skillet over medium heat. And then you're going to add the shallots. You want to fry it in the oil for about two minutes. Then add your minced garlic. Stir it around and continue to cook for another two minutes over medium heat. Next, add half a teaspoon of dry Italian seasoning or mixed Italian herbs. You're going to add red chili pepper flakes, as much or as little as you want, depending on how spicy you want your pasta. Then we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of seasoned or seasoning salt. And black pepper to taste. I like mine a little peppery, so I go a little heavy handed on this. Once you've added the spices and herbs, give everything a good mix to ensure that all the flavors can infuse together. Then you're going to add your olives and give everything a good mix and cook for about another minute. So after the olives have cooked for about a minute, the pasta should be just about done. So once the timer goes off for your pasta, turn off the heat. And then you're going to add half a cup of that pasta water to your pan with the olives. This is going to help create a sauce for the pasta. 
Okay, so full confession, I didn't realize my camera was not recording for these next few steps. But basically, to get to the sauce at this point, you're going to add your lemon zest and your lemon juice plus one cube of vegetable bouillon to the pan and stir it around to make sure the bouillon dissolves fully. And then let it simmer for about another minute or so, and this is how you get this pasta sauce. Once the sauce is done, remove the pasta directly from the pot of water it was boiling in and put it into the pan with the sauce. Don't worry about draining it and don't worry if you get some extra pasta water into it, it's fine. You just need to get the pasta into the sauce so it can finish cooking and so it can absorb the flavors. Next we're going to add our greens. I like to use fresh baby spinach or you can use baby kale or chopped kale if you prefer instead. As with all greens, it will shrink as it cooks, so we're going to add half of the spinach now and toss it well with the pasta so it can start to cook down and shrink and get mixed throughout the noodles. Once the first half of your greens have cooked down and wilted and made more room in the pan, you're gonna add your second half of your greens and continue to toss the noodles so that the heat from them can cook down the spinach and also mix it throughout the dish. If you notice your pasta getting a little bit dry, feel free to add a little bit more of that pasta water to the pan. It'll help continue to keep the noodles saucy. That's it! You're done and ready to eat your perfect pasta dish. Because I wanted a little bit of texture with my pasta, I added some fried onions to the top of it for a little bit of crisp. As is, the dish is vegan, but if you want to add cheese, or even a fried egg on top to make it a complete meal, feel free to do so. The written recipe with measurements for this dish is on my website, pixienoms.com. Ta-da! And that is how you make this lemony, olivey, spinachy pasta. You can use it as a side dish or a main dish. Serve it with whatever you want. Basically, just shove it in your mouth and enjoy the deliciousness. And to drink, I have this uh, Safeway brand sparkling water. It's mango and passion fruit. Two of my favorite flavors combined into one. So before I start talking, let me take a bite of this pasta. I kind of went overboard and gave myself like a really huge helping. I'm not sure if I could eat it all, but I'm going to try. Mm. You get a tang from the lemon, you get that salty, briny pop from the olives. You get your daily dose of vegetables with your spinach and the whole wheat pasta has a nutty flavor to it which is why I like using it in dishes where I don't have any meat or protein in it because it's just all the better. Mmm. So good. Before I start talking about New Year's resolutions, like, let me just ask a question. When is the right time to stop greeting other people with Happy New Year? Because to me, like, I don't know, even like the second week of January saying Happy New Year to people sounds a little weird. Or maybe it's just me because I work like every day and like weekends and during the New Year's holiday. So like, it's not like a brand new year to me. Like, it's just like constant work. But to other people, they might have like other ideas of um, when they should stop saying Happy New Year. There's like arguments and debates that, you know, you can say it as long as it's in the month of January. It's the first time you're seeing or interacting with that person. Um, to me, for sure, by February, no one should be saying Happy New Year unless they're talking about Chinese New Year. I'm really hungry. So yeah, I'm gonna pause for a moment in <laughs> talking. And shovel more noodles in my mouth. 
<laughs> you know when something is like so delicious that you just don't talk, you just want to keep eating and shoving it in your mouth? This is one of those dishes where I want to do that. <laughs> And I think I lied when I earlier said I probably served myself too much in this bowl. Nope. I'm gonna demolish and destroy it all. <laughs> mm. Superb. So on to New Year's resolutions. I am one of those people who don't make new year's resolutions people ask me like oh what's your resolution for this year i don't really have resolutions and in my opinion people who make resolutions tend to overshoot and aim for a really impossible goal or to me it's the resolutions you can actually do it whenever you want. It doesn't have to be the start of the new year. And um, people tend to think that if you break the resolution within the month of January, you can't pick up and try it again. And I'm of the opinion that um, basically any changes that you want to make in your life, you can do it whenever you want. I know like New Year's tend to be like the target point because it's a tangible date it's like okay new year new beginnings new everything and I understand that concept but you know to me life is pretty much continuous and there are cycles to the life yes and while the calendar year is new it's still basically the same life that you're living. So if you want to make a change, you can do it pretty much any time you want. And if you fall off that resolution wagon, uh, you don't have to wait till the new year, the new calendar year to start it over again. You don't even have to wait till a new month or a new week. Um, if you decide like on a Thursday that you're gonna start going to the gym then that is all the more kudos to you because sometimes I feel like with me personally, if I set like a date, then I can procrastinate like, oh, I'm going to lose X amount of pounds by this date at the end of the year. It's going to make me procrastinate in losing the weight like, you know, I won't start the diet until like months into the year saying, you know, I still got plenty of time or, you know, I, oh gosh, <laughs> the neighbor's dog is barking about something. Also, if I set like a target date towards the end of the year, I probably won't start working towards it till later because I do procrastinate in a lot of things in my life. I work way better under pressure. So um, waiting till the last minute to try to pull off an impossible goal is not something that's doable for me in my life. And yes, resolutions tend to be large and big and ambitious. And I'm not saying you should shoot for smaller things, but there should be a plan in place of smaller steps and smaller achievements for you to reach that bigger goal or the bigger resolution that you've made for yourself. And also, I don't like the time constraint of a year. Like for me, I want more time in case something goes wrong, in case things happen, you know, there's more wiggle room and I won't be so harsh on myself for not achieving that goal by the end of the year, um, just because it's me. I mean, it's just, I know the way I am. If you like setting resolutions, then, you know, that's your thing. And I really hope you reach all your goals and accomplish everything you want to with your resolutions in the year. And while the neighbor's dog is barking like a lunatic at absolutely nothing at all. Once again, I'm going to eat some more. 
<laughs> For me, I don't set resolutions. I set, I guess you could call them intentions. Like in the new year, I'm going to try to be kinder to myself mentally. But then I also set like goals for myself. Like each month I'm going to attempt to share two new recipes to my website. Another intention I had set for myself for this year is to attempt to spend more time with friends and family. <clears throat> Sometimes I get into these moods where pretty much everything gives me anxiety and I just want to hermit and hide away and just, <laughs> you know, not meet up with friends, not go see family or friends. And <clears throat> um, I realized that life is short and I should maximize the time I'm able to spend with the people I like, enjoying their company and the people I love. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was hoping I could do like one video without getting teary eyed or crying and uh, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> It's because, you know, I just think of the close people that I've lost, you know, who have died and passed on this past year. And I always think like, oh, I wish I had more time. And it's one of those where it's like, I do have the time. I just need to get out of my mind and stop letting anxiety rule my life and to spend the time with people that I want to hang out with without fear because it's easier to say now when I'm not in the middle of an anxiety attack that nobody else cares what I'm doing like you know, if I go out to a restaurant with a friend, no one's going to be staring at me and looking at me like, oh, who is this person and why are they meeting up with a friend? Like, they don't give a crap. They're with their friends. They're focused on their friends. They're hanging out. Their meal. But it's one of those, like, when you're in the middle of an anxiety attack, you think that everyone and everything is staring at you, judging you. I just, I need to talk myself out of those thoughts brought on by anxiety more often so I can go and enjoy time with friends way more often. I mean, it's kind of weird if you think about it that, um, I don't know, I'm putting myself out on video. I've put myself out there on TV. And yet I have a lot of anxiety about things. I'm just very good at hiding the anxiety, I suppose. If you make resolutions, I hope you're able to keep them. And if you're not able to keep your resolutions, don't be so hard on yourself. You can always jump back on or, you know, lower your resolutions to a more obtainable goals. So you can work your way up to the bigger resolution. And if you're like me and don't make resolutions, that's okay too. I just hope that 2019 will bring lots of reasons to smile for everyone and lots of happiness, lots of good fortune, and all that happy horse shit. <laughs> it's not much of a last bite. I was too busy inhaling all my food to get a proper last bite. So here we go. Last bite, last bite, last bite, last bite. <laughs> and we're done. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Grub and Gab with me, Pixie. It's time to put away the leftovers and wash up the dishes. So, until next time, doodles.
there's just something about that sound that I just absolutely love.